Uh, like uh, Bonk Populaire, like uh, Edmund, Group, Edmund de Rothschild, like uh, Omar Nair. And now we have uh, at last getting moving, having uh, unfurled that massive black fractional jib is uh, Spindrift, Spindrift Racing with uh, Jan Guichet and uh, Donna Bertarelli on Spindrift Racing and uh, she just comes around, as I say, they sort of start to generate their own wind as they uh, speed up and uh, we heard um, Dee Kavari saying the other day, we had an interview with her and uh, she was saying they're, they're so fast normally that you're always going upwind even downwind they're so quick that the apparent wind comes right forward all the time so you spend most of your time going upwind and you tend to be wearing full foul weather gear most of the time as well Bon Populaire with uh, a bowman there on the uh, centre hull on the uh, blue and white yes, yes, from the Royal Yacht Squadron in uh, the most prestigious uh, eight minutes uh, uh, we would say the in all of the uh, racing there in the, the sailing world and uh, uh, that is, is uh, uh, Cow's Castle in the Royal Yacht Squadron and the solos are stretching out before it this line taking up a lot of sails she just decides it's time to get to the line now of course it's all very well for these guys. Uh, 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 the the uh, uh, in the sailing world, in the open 60s. But you imagine manoeuvring 131 feet of uh, trimaran that's about sort of 80 or 90 feet wide uh, through these uh, through all this rather crowded waterway. So it's uh, it's quite a tricky exercise to do. I don't think it's something I'd like to do. I think you'd have your heart in your mouth all the time. It'd be quite scary. And uh, lots of spectator boats out with you there, Dick. So uh, pretty hard to police that, as always. Yeah, there's uh, ribs everywhere now. Everybody's coming out and getting ready. Let's uh, hope they all stay safe. But, uh, the uh, Spindrift Racing heading down towards the Royal Yacht Squadron. Most of the smaller boats in the fleet staying up here at the uh, outer limit mark, together with... Uh, together with Banque Populaire, just looking for Oman Sail, Oman Sail heading down with uh, Spindrift Racing towards the island. As, uh, the smaller boats prepare for the start, they're getting a bit close to the line, of course they don't cover the ground, although Moldhouse are fairly quick in general, they don't cover the ground like uh, 131 footers like Spindrift Racing, they've got that massive black sail plan towering over everything in the solar. Oman sail just unfurling her headsail, getting ready because it's the five minute gun has just gone. We didn't get a gun there. No. Um, but uh, they would have given the signal over VHF radio anyway. And a collection of multicolored sails. We can say uh, Oman Air with uh, the uh, blue sails and uh, taking part in Cow's Week earlier on. Just looking for group Edmund de Rothschild. Oh, I've lost her. Bonk oh, she's right behind me. Bonk Populaire starting to come in towards the line. Group Edmund de Rothschild or Gitana 15 is there as well. So, uh, that's interesting. Are they a minute out on their timing? Hmm. Well, that's strange. That's uh, on my watch. That's um, yes. eleven fifty-six. I think I agree, but um, that's the gun, and uh, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Very interesting. Because are they going to go at twelve o'clock on the dot, or are they going to go in five minutes' time? That to be one minute past twelve. Very strange. That is. I wonder who. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know. We are only guessing out here. As the uh, the two MOD 70s, Oman Air and Group Edmund de Rothschild, manoeuvre past each other, right out by the pin end. Whereas uh, Spindrift is going to give uh, the spectators on the green and the parade a bit of a view, I think. As Bonk Populaire comes past us, uh, yes. their heads out. 
The, the preparatory signal is with uh, four minutes to go. Ah, right. And there's a one. There'll be a one-minute signal as well. So that's the uh, slight difference to the uh, other starts we're used to here at the squadron. Warning signal uh, with ten minutes to go, and then the preparatory signal with four minutes to go. Ah, so they they're using uh, uh, the, the more modern version of uh, the start sequence, which is four one go. So uh, right. So that's why we've got that difference there. This is Fastnet Radio, 87.7 FM here in Cowes and uh, 87.9 FM in Plymouth. Also online, uh, fastnetradio.co.uk. And uh, for the live web stream pictures, uh, if you are near a computer, do log on to uh, fastnet.rorc.org for the uh, pictures from the air and uh, also from the uh, shore here in uh, Cowes. Many, many people now watching from the Esplanade and the Green too. It's going to be a fantastic sight. Welcome listeners to uh, BBC Radio Solent to the start of the Rolex Fastnet Race 2013 and uh, we've had the first two guns for the multi hulls the first start here in the sunshine. We've just got about seven seven and a half eight knots of wind which is uh, picked up a little bit from earlier on but the sight we're watching in the sunshine is the massive new French trimarans we have uh, Bonk Populaire heading down towards the Isle of Wight towards the Royal Yacht Squadron uh, in front of her with a towering black sail plan is uh, Spindrift Racing sailed by Yang Guichard and uh, Donna Bertarelli now they set a, a record last year of only just over, a last race rather in 2011, of only just over um, a day, 30 odd hours they took to get round and uh, I don't know if there'll be any records this year, I doubt it the winds are going to be fairly light. Behind me as I manoeuvre near the line as the hooter goes for one minute to the start, the first start of uh, Rolex Fastnet Race 2013. Uh, there is Oman Sail, Oman Air, the uh, MOD 70 Trimran. She's at right at the limit mark at the start, in amongst the traffic. Next to her is a lot of the smaller Trimrans and ca smaller Catamarans, which are cruising boats racing in this class. They're going to take a little bit of time to get round, but uh, the big multi hulls they're going to rush round there in just a couple of days, I should think. So Sydney Gavinier with uh, Oman Air, with uh, Neil McDonald from Hamble on board. He's uh, one of the uh, leading lights in this sort of racing. And Neil is probably standing next to Sydney and sort of whispering in his ear. And as 10 seconds go to the start, the race officers call 10 seconds, the uh, Oman Air boat comes in right close to the line. The gun goes, they're all clear. And uh, who's going to be the first to cross? Bonk Populaire in the middle of the line She's staying out of, uh, out of the way. She was a little bit behind the line, now catching up. But uh, Oman Air first over. They're accelerating now with uh, an increasing wind and uh, the spray just flying gently from her bows as she overtakes some of the smaller catamarans. The huge Spindrift Racing has gone right into the Isle of Wight to give spectators down there probably the best possible view of this incredible 131-foot boat. Overhead helicopters with uh, cameramen and photographers, but it's all eyes on the big trimaran Spindrift as she comes right in by the Royal Yacht Squadron, and uh, she'll be zooming past the shore very soon, building up speed. In my rigid inflatable dinghy boat, we're still doing eight knots in about seven knots of wind, so it shows how these trimarans generate their own breeze. Oman Air attacks. She's going to go for the mainland shore. The tide is against these boats slightly, so they have to uh, be a little bit careful and uh, try and get as maximum advantage as possible and stay out of the way. Well, we've got a whole string of starts to go through, and there's boats everywhere. This is the biggest ever Rolex Fastnet race. And so now for the boats with uh, 611 nautical miles ahead of them, the race has begun. Oman Air underway and a, uh, a flotilla of uh, motorboats now following these multi-hulls out to uh, the west, to the Needles, to the Lizard, to the uh, Land's End and the Fastnet Rock. 
Um, but of course, the uh, motorboats won't be going quite so far as that, but these multi-hulls will. And uh, let's see what time they can do in uh, these conditions. And indeed, when they're going to meet in the uh, centre of the Solon, because uh, Spindrift starting in here at the uh, squadron with its uh, black sails and the others starting further out. Yeah, I think, um, <coughs> I think uh, Oman Air with uh, Neil McDonald probably calling the shots. He knows the uh, Solop very well. He's decided to try and work that slacker tide on the mainland side, whereas Safran has probably, uh, sorry, uh, Spindrift has probably gone for the uh, reverse eddy that you get along uh, the Medina, comes out of the Medina and heads along to the uh, to the west. So I think that's what they've gone for. But uh, those huge black sails now going past, uh, coming down to Egypt Point. And behind them, Bonk Populaire with her blue sails. In the middle of the line, it's uh, Group Edmund de Rothschild. And then behind me at the uh, outer limit mark, tacking into the mainland, all the smaller catamarans, the cruising and cruiser racer catamarans. But all eyes, of course, on the, uh, the massive trimarans. And uh, it really is a, uh, a lucky thing to be here in Cowes, watching this and uh, the uh, trimarans heading off on their race. Well, we maybe do with a little bit more breeze but uh, they're going along nicely aren't they and it really is a very uh, sleek looking mean machine spin drift with uh, the record of course with uh, 32 hours as you were saying 48 minutes and 46 seconds uh, two years ago in the last Rolex Fastnet race spin drift racing heading off on uh, its uh, race there as the helicopters buzz above and the uh, motorboats chase it churning up uh, the uh, Solon behind Spindrift. It was uh, pretty tricky for them at the start. They had to uh, bear away and get through a, quite a few spectator boats just to be able to turn around and then start over the line. Yeah, they were, were in a bit of a crowded area. Bonk Populaire, quite a late start for her. She only just crossed the line, I think. Prince de Britain, Britannia, um, Prince of Brittany anyway, with her fruit on the sail. She's going in towards the, uh, towards the mainland. Bonk Populaire. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, no. Bonk Populaire not across yet? No, they're just unfurling their jib again. They just, when they stop, they really do stop, don't they? And yeah. uh, now just picking up speed again. And when they go, they really do go. But it's that um, tricky in between bit. The in between bit. And interestingly, talking about in between bits, um, Group Edmund de Rothschild has found some breeze in the middle of the Solent. And she's now just about flying her main hull as we come down to northeast Gurnard Boy. Uh, but uh, but uh, Oman Air with her turquoise sails down by Stansor Point, followed by a, a bunch of ribs of spectators. She's got a, a big lead over Gitana 15, Group Edmund de Rothschild. And in fact, I think if they were going to go all the way to the centre of the Solon, I think Oman Air would actually be ahead of Spindrift Racing. But uh, Spindrift Racing is uh, by far the bigger boat. She's going to uh, carry her speed right towards the mainland. I think they decided the tide is probably eased enough that they can go down the middle of the uh, Solon. But Oman Air got a cracking lead over Gitana 15, Group Edmund de Rothschild. And we're following her at about 10 knots. Uh, and we've only got 10 knots, well, we've got nine knots of wind. So <laughs> they generate their own breeze, these boats. It's an absolute flotilla of uh, motorboats following these multi-hulls out there, isn't it? Right across the Solent with uh, helicopters getting some great shots too. Bonk Populaire is uh, now underway and it's got to hurry up, try and catch them up. Yeah, they'll be hoping for a lot more wind, I think. Oman Air uh, just flying a hull and uh, we're about to get the five-minute gun now. Five-minute gun for uh, the Amoka 60s. So four, five four-minute gun. I've got to actually get back to them because we'll oh, so you, see this. You're absolutely right. I've got to get used to this uh, four-minute uh, preparatory. Four minutes to go until the uh, Mocha 60s start. And uh, six of the world's very best solo skippers here taking uh, part in this, including Hugo Boss uh, skipper Alex Thompson and uh, Francois Gabert on Massif. Hugo Boss is uh, pretty easy to spot. It's the uh, black monohull. And Massif has got a lot of blue, hasn't it? Yeah, blue and green on the sails, uh, massive up there, and of course the silver hull of Hugo Boss with those black sails with Boss in great silver letters on them. Now, uh, Alex Thompson, uh, he has a habit of uh, 
doing some sailing in a very smart Hugo Boss suit, but he was not wearing, he's wearing his foul weather gear today, much more sensible. Multi hulls away and they were grinding away on Oman Air. Bonk Populaire uh, doesn't have the boat speed of the others at the moment, but uh, then again, it's uh, still trying to get out where, to where that breeze is. Oman Air just uh, going along really nicely in the background. Uh, we can see Spindrift, they're sort of coming together and uh, Oman Air does uh, seem to have the advantage, doesn't it? Well, I think when they uh, came, I thought they were going to cross, but uh, ah, Oman, Oman Air they attacked. They're and, attacking, yeah. yeah. So they're going to have to go around the stern of uh, Spindrift. So there we are, the first tack um, and uh, lots of spectator ribs there which uh, we'll have to make sure they stay, steer clear of the uh, racing yacht with uh, just over two minutes to go until the start of the uh, monohulls, the Amoka 60s. Yeah, and we have... Uh...